I am Heidi Benjaminson, your host of Confidence Coaching, a podcast for mothers who want solid relationships with their teens. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 136, Accepting Compliments. I'm glad you're here. Before I jump into today's episode, would you do me a favor? And if you haven't already, would you leave me a review of this podcast in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts? I'll put a link in the show notes in the episode and on my website episode page. This helps the show grow and I really appreciate it. Thank you to SD Morgan 415 for a new review that says, thank you, Heidi, for sharing all the good stuff about being a mama and the good advice and coaching for the tough parts. So... This is quite appropriate. I just read to you a compliment. I'm asking you to review and hoping that it is complimentary. And in today's episode, I want to talk about how we accept compliments, why it may be hard, and how to accept the goodness that others see and not deflect it. Okay, raise your hand if it's hard for you to accept a compliment, or you can think of a time when you felt uncomfortable getting praise or handled it awkwardly. I hope you all have your hands raised. Trust me, both of my hands are up. I really wanted to dive into and figure out why we act this way on default and how to stop it. Because I knew it was a skill I needed to work on. I have, and I'm intrigued at the root of the issue for us. I did some research and different social scientists list these as the reasons why some people find it difficult to accept compliments. It could be social anxiety. Some say it's because we have low sense of self or self-worth. So hearing the compliment doesn't jive with our sense of who we are. Other scientists say the discomfort is because we haven't felt a lot of joy or happiness in life. So the sudden positive feelings They feel odd and we push them away. I don't like having the spotlight on me. So compliments seem like at least one person, if not more, are staring at me for at least a few seconds and my body reacts by blushing. So we bring two things into every social interaction, our own self-knowledge and our own self-esteem. How we feel about ourselves is revealed in every conversation. So if someone gives us a compliment about something that we don't think is great, we will bat the compliment away, which reveals what we think about ourselves. Last summer, my sister-in-law gave me a compliment about my body, and instead of accepting it graciously, I quickly made some negative comment. It happened so fast, I wish I could redo the whole event, because I watched her face drop just a little bit. I was rejecting her nice gift. She had tossed me a million dollars and I chucked it right back at her. I was telling her that she was wrong to think the way she was thinking. Now, y'all, that isn't really nice. How rude of me. But in the moment, I was revealing my own negative thoughts and insecurities, which showed me where I have some work to do. Because accepting compliments, it isn't just learning to love our good. It's also a critical component to making relationships and creating connections with others. In that moment, when I trampled on the compliment that my sister-in-law gave me, I was telling her I thought she was wrong to feel that way. And unconsciously, she isn't going to want to give me other genuine compliments. Unconsciously, she's going to remember that it doesn't feel good to her to say something nice to me. So see the danger here? If we go around being unable to accept compliments, We put a big shield up to positive energy that can flow into our lives and we block connection with others. If we feel unworthy, no amount of praise can make us feel otherwise. Remember, we are hardwired on default to be scanning the world for the negative. Our lower brain isn't wired to focus and believe all the good. If it sees nine good things about us and one bad, our brain will focus on the bad. This is for survival. 
It also feels dangerous to our lower brain for us to stand out, to not be part of the pack. So our brain thinks the compliment means maybe we won't blend in and it fears being separated from the group. Not belonging can feel unsafe. For me, I think the not belonging and being singled out feels dangerous on some primal level. It could also feel unsafe to have people think that we're perfect or too good and all of a sudden we fear that when they see all our flaws, they won't accept us and love us. It feels dangerous if people won't see us as real humans. So you may know exactly why you don't like compliments. It probably doesn't matter as much why. For most of us, it's probably a combination of all of these things. It's less important, I think, to figure out why and more important to practice managing this fear, to practice confidently accepting compliments, to work on our own positive sense of self, to uplevel the positive emotions we feel daily so the compliments feel in line with what we already believe. We've been conditioned to think that feeling good about ourselves is vain or is bad. This isn't true, y'all. We hurt ourselves. We hurt others. We pass on these insecure emotional cycles when we can't allow and celebrate our own strengths. Our kids need to see us being okay with greatness. This isn't arrogance. Arrogance is rooted in insecurity and arrogance needs to be better than other people. What I'm talking about here is confidence, celebrating our good and knowing that we have some weaknesses and both can exist at the same time. This has been real, real hard, heavy work for me to do. I have never been comfortable owning what I'm good at. I'm not sure why. I've always been complimented on my hair. I don't know why. For decades, I couldn't just say thank you when I got compliments. At times, I'd respond by saying thank you and then pointing out something negative about my body or about myself. Did I feel the need to equal myself out? I don't know. Did I not want the other person to feel bad about their hair? I don't know. I just know I didn't handle those compliments well for a long time. Sometimes people ask me if it was my natural hair color and I say yes, because up to the recording of this episode, it is. Now, it has started coming in a new, lighter color. I won't say the color. Maybe I resist owning the compliment because I see sometimes jealousy or disconnection in others and I want to equalize myself, to be like them. I'm not sure. The irony is, handling it well looks like just saying, thank you, I appreciate your comment. So simple. Thank you, how kind of you to say that. If I had just done that, the other person can feel good about their compliment. I can create connection with that person. I accept and validate their kindness. Nothing else. Taking compliments well means having a few phrases practiced and tucked away. Then zipping our mouths, staying quiet when we want to follow it with some self-deprecating comment. If someone compliments me on something that maybe I think is pretty, I practice saying, thank you. I like it too. I make good cookies. If somebody compliments me, I say, thank you. I love those cookies too. A few months ago, I was at a dinner with several extended family members, and at a point in dinner, someone started offering me very kind and generous compliments about this podcast, about my business. Y'all, I made myself sit in the discomfort, and I emotionally accepted the praise. I said, thank you. I appreciate that. And I mirrored back to her that I agreed with what she was saying. I actually reported back to my mastermind group I am in that I accepted that compliment and what that meant as a milestone in my own growth. I was proud of myself. I didn't shrink or say something negative. I sat in the discomfort with my shoulders back, head high, letting the compliment land. Okay, practicing. Thank you. You are very kind. I'm so glad you like this coconut cake. I do too. It's my favorite. I now make myself not point out the small areas that I burn if someone compliments something that I've made. I make myself not point out the flaws. I say, oh, I'm glad you like it. Thank you. When complimented on my podcast, I don't point out the flaws or the subperfect sound quality or anything negative. I just say, thank you. I love that part of my business. How kind it is even to say, a compliment from you means a lot. Thank you. That is a connecting 
comment. It could be that giving the compliment is hard for the person and the conversation means a lot to them and they really want to express their gratitude. Being willing to accept the goodness of others really is a gift to them and deepens the relationship with both of you. So make a list of the things that people compliment you on or think you're good at. Now look at the list. Do you agree with them? Why or why not? What strengths are you not celebrating? What feels dangerous about celebrating that you have a beautiful voice, are very patient with your children, are creative, athletic, and win races, whatever it is? What feels vulnerable about accepting and believing the greatness? If you don't agree, sit with this. Is it possible that other people see something great and you just can't acknowledge your gifts? Write down for a week all the compliments you get. Then keep adding to the list. What gifts, skills, qualities do others see that you need to start believing are really great? It's okay and safe to believe that we're great, to believe we have strengths and flaws. We have all of it. Remember, our vibe attracts our tribe. Being able to connect with other positive and happy people is an important skill. Accepting compliments is an important exercise that builds connection. We become people that others want to connect with, and we feel more able to give compliments as we accept them more with grace. Reach out to me and tell me how this goes for you, what seems hard, and report back when you accept a compliment. What phrases work for you? For me, it's a simple, thank you, I appreciate that, and then just smiling. Okay, that's it for this week. If you would like personalized weekly private one-on-one coaching to give your family the gift of your confidence, sign up for a consult call at HeidiBenjaminson.com. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family, not a perfect mother. Our families want us to feel confident, anchored, and true. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week.